Okay, if you get your Nixie Clock kit, I will show you now what you get, what it comes with. So you get, this is obviously uh, the case, you get this circuit board, you get the circuit boards or the connections for uh, the Nixie tubes. I'm pretty sure that you have to break them apart. At least that's what I think. You get screws and the feet for the case. More parts for the case. As you can tell. Then you get this kit. I don't know, it has the instructions that you can download. I will show you what they look like later. So here, those are all the electric parts. And of course you get the most important part, which is all those Nixie tubes. Yeah. So I will show you what the instructions look like. I'm not sure if I will... Uh, come on, focus. I'm not sure if I will record and film how I put this clock together. I mean... It's basically just following the instructions, soldering that stuff in. But, yeah. So those are NH14. Really nice and beautiful tubes. Kind of small, but still really extremely beautiful. You can see the numbers in there. I already know that the 5 is just a turned around 2, but who cares. So I will download the instructions, show you what the instructions look like, and then I try to put this clock together. You know, because I also want to have this clock working as fast as possible. Yeah, but this is what you get if you order this Nixie clock. Yeah. So, I, I won't be filming the whole process of building this clock, but every now and then I will turn on the camera and show and tell you what I do or what you do or whatever. So the first step is placing the LEDs, if you choose to have LEDs, uh, put them on the circuit board, but don't fix them or don't solder them. Then you have like those pieces of uh, shrinking tube and you should cut uh, little pieces of the shrinking tube they suggest that you use uh, 11 millimeters so you cut them and then you put them over those LEDs and then you use a hot blowing device you know like a, a hair dryer or something to gently uh, heat up the shrinking tube and shrink it you know, this makes the light go up and concentrate on the bottom of the tubes instead of going everywhere. So, um, yeah, I will be doing this now. Okay, now we start with the soldering. The instruction tells us, or the instructions are telling us that we are supposed to start with D1 to D3. So those are those three things and you can see that there is this little white or silver band. 
the camera would focus. So you can see this little band right here. And on the board, there is also this little band right here. So this tells us that they're going in this way, not this way. So, yeah, we start by soldering in those three things. So after we put those three things in, we can now continue putting this thing in. And I show you the instructions later on. But this thing goes right here and they want us to bend this thing so that it kind of covers up those three things so that it's sitting like this. So um, yeah, let's do it. Okay, I'm making this video as realistic as possible because, you know, I want everybody to know what they have to go through if they get and want to build a Nixie clock. And if they get this particular uh, set or kit, so here is now the first problem that I am facing, uh, the resistors. I mean, the instructions tell me what kind of resistor goes where, you know, like a 4.7, I don't know, is it kilo ohm or something like that? So they tell you um, what resistor goes where but they don't tell you which resistor it is. I mean, which one of those resistors is 4.7 ohm or 4.7 kilo ohm or something like that? Which one of them is it? You know, they don't tell you which color code uh, the resistor needs to have. So um, if you don't really know the color codes of the resistors then you are basically screwed right there you know you have those come on camera focus please so when it comes to the resistors yeah you have those different rings those different colors and yeah, basically those colors tell you what kind of a resistor it is, how much tolerance and whatsoever, blah, 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 blah. But if you don't know that stuff, you are already screwed at this point, like I am. I really don't know which resistor I have to use right now. So, um, I don't know, maybe I will continue building the other stuff. And then once I'm done, I'm trying to figure out which resistors are which ones. I mean, why didn't they just write it down? Why didn't they just write it down right here? Or in the instructions, why didn't they just tell you what kind of color code it is? You know, like, for example, R4 is color code this, 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 and that. Uh, this is like the first problem, the first issue that I'm facing right now. You know, aside from that, everything is going quite well. And the instructions are clear, except for the stuff with the resistors. So, um, as soon as I have figured this out, I will, of course, show you uh, the solution so that you don't have to Google your ass off trying to find, uh, I don't know, one of those color code calculators or whatever those things are called. So uh, fingers crossed that everything will be fine. Okay, like I told you, uh, it is kind of difficult to figure out which one, why is it so freaking yellow? Come on, adjust the light, please. Uh, yeah, like I already said, it's freaking tough to figure out which color code is what kind of 
whatever resistor and if you go online there are some of those um, how do you say uh, resistor calculators or something like this I mean it was extremely difficult for me to figure out because I have a slight uh, color blindness or color weakness so it was hard for me to decide is it brown or red is it orange or red is it blue or violet or brown and green it's difficult for me so yeah there are calculators and yeah you have to type in of course you have to figure out where to start on which side to start because if you mix those colors up and let's say the second one is violet but you started from the other side so you type in brown black black you know and something then the second color would be black then it wouldn't be the correct number so yeah i hope that i figured it out right now i wrote it up here so yeah this is one suggestion for i don't even know if those people are going to watch those kind of videos but this is definitely one suggestion that I should, that I'm giving to everybody who is selling or creating those Nixie Clock kits, that they write down which resistor is which one, or that they at least give you the color codes. Okay, uh, I'll continue. Okay, don't be confused, but I'm sitting in the kitchen now because, um, yeah, you know that I live in a place where I only have one living room and no bedroom and my girlfriend is asleep right now. So um, the next step, or not really the next step, I mean, I'm already this far right now. So uh, the next step is the most important part, which is the tubes. Uh, I have the IN14. I don't even know why they are called IN because it says NH14, but whatever. So um, come on, focus. So the first thing that you have to do is uh, identifying the anode on the tube and in this case it's the one that is sitting right here on the back and it has a white uh, coating. This camera used to be better when it comes to the focus. <laughs> A lot better. There you go. So this is the anode. And then you have to cut them in certain different lengths. So this way it's easier to put them in. And the newest circuit boards, the ones that I have, they come with those things. It also tells you tube on the other side and all that cool stuff. So the anode goes here, but as you can tell there are two dots missing or, or two holes right there and right there on the left and right side of the anode. So uh, yeah, you basically just cut them away and then you put in the tube just like that. And yeah, then you solder it and then you can cut them away. So I will continue working on them and the rest of the circuit board. The time it's 
already 1.15 at night <laughs> uh, and it's a lot of fun. I mean it is stressful especially if you have to work with tools like this. You can see that it doesn't really close. So trying to cut away things with that piece of crap. Terrible. Just freaking terrible. Yeah. But I would say so far so good. And I really hope that everything works. Then I have to put the EPROMs or ICs in and all that stuff. So we will see how it works out. And yeah, let's continue. Okay, and this is what the Nixie clock looks like when it's fully finished. And I have to say it is really gorgeous, really beautiful. So, um, yeah, what can I say about it? Um, it was really easy to put together. The instructions were really easy to read and easy to understand, even if you don't know anything about electronics. The only complaint that I have about the instructions is that they didn't tell you the color codes for the uh, resistors because they can't assume that everybody who builds this kind of clock knows the color codes of those resistors. So this is probably the only complaint that I have when it comes to the instructions. So, yeah, for now I turned off the LEDs because you can see what those clocks look like with the LEDs turned on in almost every video. Yeah, what else can I say about it? It's a really nice clock, you have a lot of different settings. You know, 24 hour, 12 hours, AM and PM indicators, or if they are just, you know, dots, if they should blink or turn off or just glowing constantly, you can change if it's supposed to have this fading effect. It has a slot effect, you can change how many times the slot effect should happen. Right now I changed it so that it uh, has the slot effect every 10 minutes. It shows you the date every minute for about 5 seconds or so. It has a nighttime mode where you can set if the tubes are supposed to be dimmed or turned off completely. You can set different colors for each hour and it has an alarm, it has a snooze function, really a lot of, a lot of cool things, really. And at first I thought, okay, maybe the tubes are a little bit too small because they are just the size of my thumb, kind of. Kind of. But it looks really nice when you have it standing in front of you. It is probably my favorite Nixie clock because it is affordable, but it looks really nice. And I love the see-through case because 
if you put something like this together yourself, you want to be able to see all the work that you put in and yeah. So I'm going to post another video with some impressions of this clock. So yeah, feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, thumbs up, whatever you like. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and I see you in the next one. Bye.